been thinking a bit recently about the whole concept of lost media. This was brought on by a couple podcasts I listened to where the hosts were discussing how someone online had described a work as being lost media when that work had gotten a physical release at some point in the past, which was available on eBay. So therefore, from their perspective, it's not really lost. We know where it is. You can get a copy of it if you want it. So therefore, it's not lost. And that got me thinking. Yeah, we know where it is. We don't know what's being stored, though, or been stored. We don't know how safe that particular release was from things like BitRot because of the quality of the authoring. Separate and distinct from any archival measures that that owner of that copy has taken to try and keep it safe. This also precludes documenting what works are in peril of being lost due to misfortune, adventure, or malicious forces. So I figured I must do a video on what I consider to be the lost media spectrum. Now, I'm calling it a spectrum, but I'm using the term to describe a range of possibilities. While the work may move through several states of the spectrum, some of these states are also kind of mutually exclusive. Um, like you're this or you're not. And also, I want to note that some things that can be lost can be specific to a particular version of a work, like the original release of Star Wars A New Hope, which didn't have the episode 4 subtitle in the opening crawl. This also can include bonus features like commentaries or alternative translations of shows, like, for example, the version of Neon Just Evangelion, which described where the subtitles depict described Kalru and um, uh, Shinji's view of each other as more gay coded, as opposed to the Netflix version, which removed that. First, we should describe what makes a work safe. This means that anyone can get a hold of the work in multiple mediums, physically and digitally. For example, at this time of my recording, I can get a copy of the original version of Scarface and Brian De Palma's remake without any hassle. In more or less any form I want, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, digital, whatever. That movie is not going anywhere anytime soon. And there's enough physical copies out there that if it goes out of print, there's going to be a sustained period of time where it's available. Next are works that are in peril, works that are currently available, but otherwise could be easily lost at any time for any reason. This includes series and films that are only available for streaming, or if they get a physical release, it's a limited print run, but it was available for public sale and in sufficient numbers where theoretically anyone who wanted one could have gotten one at the time, but once it goes out of well, once that goes out of print, you have what exists in that physical release, and you have to hope that copy sticks around and doesn't get physically lost or destroyed or anything like that. The classic example of why of why I use the term "periled" is the various series that were only available for streaming at HBO Max, now just Max, and were pulled by David Zaslav for a tax write-off. There's no legal way to watch these works. Indeed, the creators of those works bemoaned their state in a the only way I can show this to my kids and incorporate it in my portfolio is if I worked it, if I worked on it, is to pirate it kind of way. And that applies to other works which are only available for streaming and have not gotten the physical release nor have been made available for digital purchase elsewhere. So, for example, um, the latest season of Stranger Things is available for streaming on Netflix. You can get it there, watch it at any time. Theoretically, it's safe. Except it's only streaming. It hasn't gotten a physical release. So the only way to make sure that it's not that it doesn't get lost if Netflix decides to pull it would be to engage in an act of piracy by circumventing DRM to scrape the video off your computer screen in a modern version of taping off your VCR or downloading off a torrent from someone who had done the same thing. There's no other active form of preser preservation available should Netflix management decide, okay, we're taking Stranger Things down. Next is bootlegs. These are works that are actively available but only through illicit means. These include some of the shows that I mentioned earlier from HBO, but also can include things like fan cam recordings of wrestling events, bootleg recordings of concerts, update, uploaded tape recordings of over-the-air broadcasts. They're available, but so only so long as the people who own it don't bring the hammer down. Now, sometimes this um, the people who own the rights can um, give their blessing to the process of bootlegs. 
famously, the Grateful Dead have had have had a very benevolent, generous, and giving policy regarding bootleg recordings of their concerts, not just in the sense of encouraging people to do so, but also through things like the Dick's Picks releases, where they try to find the best possible recordings of a particular concert and put that out there for people to get. Same thing with Fish. So, like, sometimes bootlegs have the blessing of the people who do who recorded them. That said, not always. Now, the, uh, that said, outside of the Grateful Dead, the er example of this is the Star Wars Hulk special. Iron at a limited time did not air again because Lucas hated it. So did a lot of people who worked on it. But enough people tape recorded it on their VCRs and those uh, bootlegs circulated around conventions for decades before it being distributed illicitly online and then finally getting an official release on Disney+. Plus. So, again, that is a example yeah, of a work that was preserved through bootlegs until eventually legitimate release was given. Next is archive only. Archive only are works that have been archived someplace but have not necessarily been digitally backed up or widely released or distributed through other means. This includes like an individual album release where a single or a small number of copies of an album are put out and not as physical release and not been made available digitally, like, for example, Once Upon a Time Shaolin, or works where there's a particular version of it that has been formally archived in a, um, based in a professionally maintained archive location, like the original theatrical release of Star Wars, which is in the United States National Film Archive, or Film and Audio Ambassadors and Storage. These are all theoretically safe, but malice or misfortune could cause the destruction of that archive. The historical classic example of this is, the, is frankly the Library of Alexandria, a massive archive of much of the world's learning meant to preserve and protect for future generations, as well as for current um, researchers and scholars to come and search until it burned. That said, this also includes, as I said, the newest National Film Archive, record label storage vaults, and any number of private collections around the world. This includes, also includes entities like Tokyo Lab, who would have been legally bound to destroy unclaimed film masters for numerous films whose rights were in limbo when the lab was due to shut down due to funds, funding issues, before the Toho Archive accepted the masters. My personal work, which I would describe as being in archive-only state and in a way that was in peril, is the television series Prisoners of Gravity. It is available to watch in person, person yeah. watch in person, by appointment at the Merrill Collection in Toronto, Canada. And a few episodes are up on YouTube, but when those copies are gone or those episodes on YouTube are taken down, then that's it. And those copies in the Merrill Collection are the are magnetic tapes, vi video cassettes from possibly from the original like recording of the show, of the ones that went to broadcast, but still those could potentially be subjected to bit rot unless the Merrill Collect and list the people responsible for the Merrill Collection properly digitize and maintain those those copies so they're available and maintain them. Next is out of print. These are works that receive a received a physical release, even one that was widely distributed, but is currently out of print and not readily available. And so because of this, what's left is the finite copies of the physical release, which could be a lot, could be not very much. And if those copies, again, decay due to bit rot, are lost in fires or thrown out or what have you, they potentially, they, that, that number of co copies becomes lower and lower. This includes things like the streamlined dubs of Vampire Hunter D and My Neighbor Totoro. Uh, for Vampire Hunter D, that was not included on the, on the Sentai Filmworks release. They redubbed it. Um, the my, similarly, Disney did not include the My Neighbor Totoro streamlined dub on their release. And also like the ADV release of Panty Pony Dash, which used, had a pop-up video translation note, or pop-up video style translation notes as a bonus feature. There, the show itself is still in print, but that feature is not available on it. You can find these copies on eBay or elsewhere, and there might even be bootlegs of them online. But the number of physical copies are limited and can face reduction due to destruction or degradation of existing copies, digital bootlegs dropping out of distribution due to lack of interest, or for that matter, physical copies getting slabbed due to scarcity as an investment. Because if you've slabbed a copy of a work, you can't open it to view it. 
and researchers said you'd have to break the slab, break the slabbing in order to get access to it to use it for research. And also, if it's slabbed, again, slabbing does not necessarily thwart bit rot. And so there is the risk with this process that you researchers may crack open the copy later, only to discover that the disk inside has stopped be, has stopped being readable, and thus whatever information could, could have been backed up from it is lost. Ephemeral is bootleg adjacent. The difference that people did not necessarily know that these were transitory works in advance and did not necessarily plan to record them outside of general convenience. This is stuff like regular season sporting events, TV broadcasts of movies that are available elsewhere, etc. This can range from the broadcast TV version of Shakespeare in Love that aired on ABC, or pledge breaks for anime broadcasts on public broadcasting. If these were preserved, it's because someone's VCR, DVD, or tape recorder was running at the right time. And like, the pledge breaks is a class, is actually, I think, the best example of this. Most people don't consider pledge breaks on public broadcasting to be something that's worth saving. It's something that you've when you tape it, you fast forward through it to get back to the show. Finally, home preservation. These are things that are preserved on home video, photography, or other forms of this home media preservation. These are things that we view as valuable to us for, for preserving our own memories of a particular event. If you were to tell the stories of our own family to future generations, but doesn't seem necessarily important in sign of that until it becomes really important for future generations to better understand what people's everyday lives were like because either access to the particular forms of archival aren't readily available or because that we didn't want or couldn't hang on to archives past a certain point for a number of reasons and are something that someone else wouldn't think is important until it does become important this includes like home video footage of your kid with a marching band marching in a parade this includes um, your child's first steps. This includes the high school football game that your kid played in, um, or that you played in and you asked your parent, your mom to film for you, or high school or collegiate wrestling matches, or that sort of thing. And those don't become important necessarily outside of your own need until, for some reason, maybe it does. Maybe your high school football team had John Elway on it, and that Super 8 football uh, Footage of your high school football game with Elway as quarterback now is significant from a historical standpoint. Maybe your marching band um, record, uh, recording, um, your marching band did a rendition of a piece of music that normally isn't used in marching band music and it's become went viral and now that's beloved online. Or perhaps the Classic example of something that was intended to be filmed for home preservation because they thought the person filming it thought this was an important moment to them and was only going to be for them, only for them to capture a moment of history. You have your camera and you go to film the trip of um, the, the, the um, motorcade of President John F. Kennedy in Dallas, Texas. And now you're, and now you're film is the Zapruder film because you recorded a presidential assassination. It's important until it's not. Or it's not important until suddenly it is. Um, but this also goes beyond that. This can be like have providing an actual, from a historical standpoint, um, documented evidence of what people wore, like hey, what fashion was like, actually like in the 80s, not just in the, or the 70s, or the 60s, not just in the context of what magazines were saying fashion was. It's stuff like, um, of did, did, did you play with lawn darts? Or was that like a not as big of a thing as people thought? All that sort of stuff. This isn't meant to be a comprehensive list, but instead to cover what I think the major types of potential lost media are, or categories of lost media are. Is there a form of lost media outside of these that you think is a significant bucket to consider? Uh, please hit me up in the comments with an example. I'd love to hear it.
you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.